Okay, so again, welcome to Mature and Transfer Student Orientation Part 1. Sorry, which speaks to starting school and how to prepare. What I'd like to explain to you today is your Zoom experience. So on the top right hand corner, there's a speaker or gallery view. Um, if you would like to see who's speaking, just click speaker view. If you want to see everyone, you could do the gallery view. It's totally up to you. Also, we ask that you please keep your camera and microphone muted. Um, if you would have a question or you need uh, um, assistance with Zoom, uh, please message in the chat below um, and our, our work study student Jill Raj will be able to manage that chat and let me know and I'll speak to your questions if you have any or she will answer you. Also, we ask that you please hold your questions for the panelists at, at the very end um, and we, we will have a, a Q&A with them. Our agenda for today will focus on our welcome remarks, which will come from Brian Poser, the Director of Aboriginal and Mature Student Services. I will then speak on our ACMAPS services. I'm the coordinator um, of Mature Student Success, Navani Samu Durga is my name, and we will also be doing a little icebreaker activity with everyone in the room so that you get to know each other, or just so you know you're not the only one who's a mature transfer student here. There's many of you that's joining us for this fall. Our keynote speaker, sorry, let's go back to the agenda. Our keynote speaker will be Brian Poser, as I mentioned. Um, we will also be hearing from our York University Mature Student Organization group. We have Elaine, who's representing the group, who will give you a, a little insight as to what that group is and, and events that they have planned for the fall. And then we'll do um, a quick wrap up and a thank you. And we'll speak to the COVID-19 website that York has um, up if, you have, if you need updated information. So I will now introduce um, the Director of Aboriginal Mature Student Services, Brian Poser, to do a welcome. Okay, thank you, Navani. Good morning, everyone. And again, thank you for joining us for our Mature and Transfer Student Orientation. Nav, if I could ask you to stop sharing your screen, I'll, I'll pop up mine here and uh, we'll begin. Um, that's where we start. All righty. So, Couple of, uh, a couple of things to talk about. First of all, welcome. And uh, as mature and transfer students, uh, you know you've already started a very big transition into the university and we have lots in store for you today. Um, before we get going too much further though, I would like to uh, do the traditional land acknowledgement. And um, then as you see, we'll progress with some other material here. Uh, York University campuses are located on the traditional lands of many indigenous nations. The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It's now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders and Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. Now, we're not all on the same location as uh, York Keel or Glendon campuses, so you might be in far-flung places and I'd uh, encourage you to reflect a little bit on where you are today and which traditional lands you might be occupying and uh, a little bit about this dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant it might be new language for many folks um, I'll say just very briefly that the concept here is uh, the dish with one spoon uh, has a number of different levels of significance uh, for our indigenous uh, uh, community members uh, one is that uh, it's uh, about sharing. Um, it's the notion that one takes only what one needs and, no, and not more. Uh, and so that way there is enough uh, of whatever resource to go around to everyone. And the notion too that there's a spoon, the dish that has a spoon, you'll notice there's no knife. And that's because um, in, in indigenous uh, tradition, the idea is that we, we would never bring a knife to the table. So it's a peaceable place. And uh, I'd, I'd encourage everyone, if this is brand new to you, to reflect a little bit on, uh, on your place uh, in, in uh, Canadian culture. Uh, we're just through uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day, and uh, that's a time for us all to reflect a little bit on, uh, on the nature of um, indigeneity in Canada and colonialism in Canada as well. Okay, so. Uh, we move on from there. Uh, a couple of things just to mention. 
Uh, I want to make sure that we speak to this, and I think, Navani, you're coming back to this toward the end of your agenda, but I'll just touch on this. Um, people are going to have a lot of questions about what's happening at York under the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we want to make sure you're aware uh, of a few key points, and uh, there are some resources. And incidentally, we'll be sending you copies of these slide decks uh, after today's presentation to you. So through the email that you use to register with us, uh, we'll be sending this stuff forward. First to say, uh, there is a full range of courses being offered at York this fall term. Uh, the vast majority of those are going to be online. There will be some select courses where uh, lab and or studio requirements uh, mean that the university is going to be piloting a few in-person classes, but the vast majority will be online. And so uh, your experience here today with us using Zoom might be kind of typical of some of the experiences you have in the fall, um, but there, there's a lot to learn about uh, how to be successful uh, in an online environment. We'll touch a bit on that today. Uh, one thing I would say too is that for staff, faculty, and students, uh, the eventual return to campus, which we don't know exactly the timing of that yet, uh, that eventual return is being planned very carefully and is guided by public health and government directives. So you can be assured and you can be reassured that if we're uh, suggesting that students, staff, and faculty are set to return to our campuses, uh, that doing so will be um, only following very careful planning uh, and with the proper kinds of supports and safety measures in place so that, uh, you know, we, we are maintaining the focus on our safety. Safety is the number one priority for staff, faculty, and students. And we want to make sure you, uh, you have that information that you need around that. There is a site uh, that catalogs a whole series of announcements made by the university president, Dr. Moore. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I went back to the old one, um, our president. And um, you can get there uh, with this link. And when you uh, receive this, uh, this slide deck, you'll have that opportunity to, uh, to, to, to kind of look further into those um, particular um, announcements and, and all the details about the planning that's going on. Another thing that we wanted to mention is very timely right now. Um, it concerns Black Lives Matter. Uh, you might have seen a lot of this happening in the media these days. Um, and you know, one thing that we want to kind of make sure we express today is that York stands together against anti-Black racism. There's a great deal uh, going on at York, not only in terms of, um, say, announcements that align us with anti-Black racism activity, but also, um, that is to say, uh, against anti-Black racism activity. Uh, but, but also, there are activities planned and there is work going on at the university to ensure that uh, York stands together against anti-Black racism, uh, not only by its words, but by its deeds. So you'll see more about that uh, in the coming months as well. So uh, th those are my quick opening remarks. Uh, usually at this time, I would tell people that, you know, here's, uh, here are our safety measures for leaving the room if we need to have a fire escape or anything like that. Uh, we're used to gathering in person. I think today, uh, well over 150 people have registered for our session. Uh, we have a good turnout so far and others may trickle in. Um, we're, we're delighted that you're joining us. And again, our objective today is to try to provide you some supports and some information and resources that are going to help you, uh, whether you're a mature student or a transfer student, or maybe both, uh, in your successful transition to university and getting ready for the fall term. So, Navani, I'll pass it back to you at this time to, to move forward to the next step. Thank you so much, Brian. I'm going to share my screen again with everyone. Give me a minute. There we go. Okay, so now what I will do is I'll speak to the ACMAP services and then we'll go into our uh, little activity. Um, so again, like I mentioned before, my name is Navini and I'm the coordinator of Mature Student Success at ACMAPS. And I wanna just tell you briefly about what our services are at ACMAPS. ACMAPS was actually established about uh, in 2007. We're committed to supporting mature part-time and transfer students from admissions to graduation. We serve all three populations. Keep in mind that you can be all three at the same time. You could be a mature student, you could be part-time, and you could be a transfer. Um, here at ACMAPS, what we do is we have a mature student success series workshops that we offer. And those workshops are actually developed and facilitated by our mature student peer mentors. 
they help mature students build skills to be successful at university. Um, some of those workshops are Citations 101, where you can learn APA, MLA style, introductory computer skills, time management, essay writing, or we have a very popular one that's called Cafe Hour. And what we do is we have our peer mentors run those sessions and you just come in and have a chat. In person, we would, do, we would have coffee and cookies, but um, for the fall, we won't be able to do that or in the summer, we're not doing that. But they're there just to help you chat and learn about um, resources, anything you wanna feel comfortable, learn about study tips from them, that, that's what it's for. We also have a peer mentorship program. And our, these are made up of mature students who are third or fourth year level. And they're caring, experienced students who help you navigate the campus resources and the physical space of the university. We also have a mature student first year experience program that our director Brian um, developed. And this is online for this year. And what it is, it's a, it has different workshops for mature and transfer students. They're encouraged to take these different workshops at your own time, at your own pace. And it's to help you transition to university. Um, these workshops are offered in partnership with the Career Center and Learning Skills Services. Um, so any of that information, if you're interested in registering for that program, you can go to our website. It's updated, the link is there, and then I will be um, directly send you information and enroll you into Moodle so that you're able to access that information. Okay, so now we'll go to our icebreaker. It's a five minute mixture, I call it, and it's Basically, I'll put you automatically into breakout rooms. And what we ask is that you just mingle and get to know each other. Um, what, what I would like for you to say, and if uh, hopefully you all get a turn to, to speak, is that why did you return to school now? What is your program? And what is your passion? It's just to get to know each other. And so I think what I'm going to have to do is stop sharing my screen to do this first. We'll come back to that. And I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. So just as Navani's doing that, you may see on your screen uh, a little pop-up that invites me to join the, um, the particular breakout room. And we'd encourage you just to accept that. And then at the end of the breakout rooms, uh, Navani will be able to bring you back to the main group. Okay, Brian, for some reason on the bottom of my screen, it doesn't give me an option for breakout. Does yours give you the option? Uh, it seems to do so, yep. Okay. I don't know if it's because I'm in record mode, but um, for some reason I can't see it. I only see up to reactions. Would you like to put them into breakout rooms for me, please? Sure, I'll do that right away. So folks, um, you'll see a little pop-up on your screen. Um, we're looking at approximately, um, you know, let's see here. Um, nine to ten participants per room um, and so that, that gives us nine breakout rooms that's very nice okay so here we go into breakout rooms and in a few minutes we'll pop back in from those breakout rooms to the main area um, hopefully you'll be able to quickly move through and say hello to one another and uh, we'll see you again in a few minutes
You guys could take your um, microphones off and have a chat. So why did some of you come back to York now? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah? Yes, Marge. Um, so why did you return to York? Um, I just, I'm, I'm retired and I live in Sarnia and I was looking for something to do. So I decided to come back to York. That's awesome. And what's your program? Uh, women and Gender Studies. Okay, okay. And what's your passion? Um, I'm not really sure, actually. <laughs> okay, I'm no still problem. working on that. <laughs> no problem. Um, anybody else want to share with us as to why they returned to school now? I know Amanda is having some microphone issues, so she's just going to type. Um, Nika, I think it is, says her program is Business and Society. And so, um, yeah, if anyone wants to share, it's nice to get to know each other, to know that you're not the only mature part-time transfer student at York. There's over 7,000 mature students. Um, if you didn't know, yeah, there's a lot. So Amanda says, I've decided to return back to school to further my education and try something new. It's good. Um, and learning on Zoom and doing online learning is something new for the fall for everybody. So that's going to be interesting. Um, anybody else wants to share? You could take your video off if you wish. It's up to you. Um, Nika says she's a transfer student, not a mature student. Okay, Nika, do you want to share as to um, where you transferred from? Was it a college? Was it another university? And as someone, uh, Seyma, says that she wants to become a teacher. So Seyma, are you in the Faculty of Education or are you starting off in a different degree? I'm gonna see if she's gonna type. Everyone's a little shy this morning, right? <laughs> Amanda, I'm a mature student and I guess a transfer student as well, okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to read the chat as, as we're going in here. Um, no one else wants to share? So Sema says, yes, I got an admissions in BA Educational Studies. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, so, um, yes, Karitha, Karitha Than, go ahead. So I'm, I guess I'm a transfer student and a mature student. Uh, my program is Children, Childhood and Youth Studies and I was kind of encouraged by like family members and friends to go back to university because just to, um, so my goal is to like do something with adoption and my friends and family just said, university might help you um, get to where you want to get, yeah. Oh, that's good, that's good. I have a peer mentor, I'm interested in peer mentor actually, who's in that program, she's in her fourth year and she will be speaking as one of the panelists today when I do the Q&A, her name's Kate. So you should listen to some stuff that she has to say. Yeah, she's in that program. Uh, Amanda says, I'm an anthropology BA. Okay. Um, and I don't know if everyone saw that little note that popped up, but Brian is asking us to return in a few minutes. But you'll, we'll get a note that will pop us all back into the main room shortly. Um, is this the first time that you guys are using Zoom and doing a breakout? Or have you had first a... First time for a breakout, yes. First time for a breakout. I don't know why, for some reason, the button wasn't there for me to press today. It's weird. Every time we, we do something different, we experience something different with Zoom. So we're getting used to it as well. And you'll probably learn that as you use it more and more. So yes, for breakout for Amanda, Seema says the same thing. Okay. And anybody else want to share what their passion is? Everyone's a little quiet, it's okay. Okay. So Brian says, one minute warning, return to the larger group. So if we, if we don't wanna share anymore, we don't have anything else to say, I think we could leave the room and it'll bring us back, I believe so. 
Same as says my passion is to work with children. It's awesome. Yes, I have three of them and they're very, um, <laughs> they're a handful during COVID-19, yes. <laughs> Keeping them busy. Um, okay, let's wait for Brian to pop this back in. Then. And I hope you guys enjoy the session, um, what's remaining of it once we get back. Does it give you guys an option to leave the room at the bottom? Oh, oh now it does. Here we go. Now, oh yeah, he's giving us one minute. Okay. Okay, Navani, are you still online with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so are we zooming into, uh, is there anything you'd like to do about the, the breakout before we, I begin? Uh, so did everyone enjoy that? Did everyone get to say um, and, and meet new people? My room was a, a little quiet until uh, we started just talking a little bit more and getting uh, into it with the students. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that session. It was just something really quick to get to to let you know that there's there's other people that are mature transfer or part-time students here as well. Um, so I can start sharing my screen again. Let's see, after that is I'll introduce again our keynote speaker who is Brian Poser. Um, Brian is actually gonna teach you tips and tricks on what you need to know to start your year off strong and how to prepare as a mature learner. So Brian, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you could share yours, okay? Terrific. All right, I hope everyone can see this all right. Um, so succeeding as a mature or transfer student. Um, let me start by saying that these are terms that the university uses to kind of put people into useful groupings. Um, you know, we're not all into labeling per se, but what we're interested in is making sure that we identify groups who might have elements or needs uh, or um, interests in common. Um, and that way we can begin to uh, customize our services to meet the specific needs of those students. And so when we refer to people as mature students, we're talking about folks who are typically going to be 20 years of age or older, out of high school for at least two years, and never have done um, work at post-secondary, ne never completed a full year of post-secondary. And so mature students are uh, ranging in age from 20 at, and at York all the way into their 80s. And uh, we have just under uh, 7,200 mature students at York, which is a huge percentage of our population and a surprisingly large group. And uh, you know, you'll get to see how, how robust a uh, uh, population matures are. Um, transfer students, uh, that's a label that we apply to groups who, um, who have done uh, post-secondary work either at a community college or at a university or college um, outside of, uh, of Ontario. So you might have come from a local community college, you might have done university uh, somewhere in Canada or abroad, uh, you might have got post-secondary education somewhere, and typically transfer students come uh, with some advanced standing in their degree process, and they use that past learning to guide them as they move through. So we're gonna talk for a few minutes here about succeeding as a mature or transfer student. Um, keep in mind that uh, as Navani mentioned before, you can, you can be a part-time or full-time student at York, um, and it's possible for you to be mature and a transfer student at the same time. Very typically, our mature students um, you know, have a configuration of roles that we'll talk about here in a moment uh, that mean they have a lot going on. All righty, so let's just jump in there. Um, one of the questions we get asked some of the time is the question, is there a recipe for success? And I would say that there, uh, in some ways there is a recipe for success, but it's not exactly the same recipe for every single individual. Certainly, 
you bring strengths of your own and, and you bring experiences of your own uh, that will enhance your experience at the university and uh, support your success. Uh, but here are some of the general uh, elements that we know will help uh, students be successful. Obviously working hard. Um, and what we find is mature students and transfer students uh, already come with a great deal of um, with a great deal of uh, readiness to work hard. They understand the value of uh, coming to university and they, uh, they understand what it means to, to be successful. And so they're going to apply their life skills to working hard, uh, to learn well, and to, to move through their degree process. Um, it's important too to apply your life experience. One of the great strengths of being a mature student is of course that you have life experience outside of the university. Whether you're coming from a career uh, of many years uh, and now coming to university for the first time or perhaps returning to university, if you've got experience at community college or another university uh, that you want to bring uh, to, to bear on this experience, it's important not to shut that part of you off. It's important actually to, to celebrate those life experiences and to figure out how they can figure with what you're learning in the classroom. There'll be a lot of times where you have to compare that lived experience uh, to what happens in the classroom. And sometimes those are really revealing moments. They, they teach you a lot about uh, you know, the difference between theory and practice or about how um, theory might organize your experiences. It's very powerful stuff. Uh, third thing, seeking out resources. Very important uh, to make sure that you remember you're not alone and as much as um, you might have heard from guidance counselors in the past or from other people that you know you have to be independent at university, you have to be willing to do your own thing. Uh, pardon me one sec. Uh, sorry about that, I got disturbed. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you realize you can move through university with a series of resources the university provides to enhance your success, whether that's personal counseling or it's learning skills services or writing services or math supports, there's a whole range of things to look for. Being persistent is a huge feature of uh, being successful at university. Remembering that, you know, it's really just one foot in front of the other, progressing through bit by bit, piece by piece, uh, that persistence will matter. But going through this uh, experience with a beginner's mindset, uh, remembering that you're learning something new, you're in a new space, a new culture, there are new norms at York, there's a new culture at York, and it's useful and, and actually very adaptive to, to begin thinking about this as, okay, I'm a beginner, there are gonna be new things around me, some things are not gonna operate the way I might expect them to. And additionally, um, you know, some things may not go the way I want them to because they're different than the way I'd like them to go. Um, and so the beginner's mindset says, I'm gonna see new things and I might make mistakes. And it's important to accept that that's a possibility. There is pressure on us to do well as mature and transfer students. Uh, people expect us to, to be excellent right from the start, but beginner's mindset says it's okay to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes, to adapt to the new environment. Learning new skills is all part of that, whether that's learning skills like time management or writing or how to read textbooks effectively or make notes in the lecture hall. Um, if this means that you're building skills that you had before, uh, and just sharpening those skills, that's great. Sometimes you're gonna be learning skills you've never had before. And so you wanna provide yourself some time uh, to move through that. It's also important to think about your sense of purpose. Uh, why did you come to university? We're gonna talk about this a bit further in a moment. Um, but cultivating your sense of purpose for being here is good for motivation and it's also good to kind of keep you on track and help you to discover new opportunities. Why did I come to York? Why did I choose this particular area of study? Part of York is that we have a culture, all of our own. We're a city within a city. Uh, we have more than 50,000 students. We have more than 5,000 staff and faculty. And York's culture um, may be different than the places you were before in your work life or different from other places uh, where you studied. And so paying attention a little bit for, hey, what's different about York? What's new about York? What, how does York do this? Where I come from, we did it this way, but how does York do it? Keeping flexible around that and adaptable to that is really valuable. And finally, building connections. Uh, you had just a few moments, really like three or four minutes to build connections, to start building connections in these little breakout rooms. But what we're really talking about here is 
meeting people in your class, uh, getting to know your teaching assistant or TA, getting to know your faculty member, the instructor in your course. These are all part of building connections and we want you to feel part of something. We don't want it to be that you, know, you get on public transit or get in your car and come to York and sit in a class and go home or in, under COVID, uh, log into your online course, take your course and then log off and not make any connections. That's really not what we want for you. We want you to feel part of something bigger and uh, that, that means making connections. And you'll hear a little bit from the York University Mature Students Organization today uh, who can elaborate on that a little bit. Okay, so um, given where we are, I'm gonna move forward just a little bit. Um, ask yourself this question, what drives you? Uh, what are your primary motivations for attending university? Uh, the, the top four are listed here, but it might be something else for you. Are you here for career advancement? Are you hoping that by studying at university, you'll earn a credential that will open doors to a new career or to advancement in your current career? Uh, are you here for self-fulfillment? Is this kind of the feeling like I've always wanted to come to university? Uh, this is my time. This is my opportunity to do that. Are you here to be a role model to other people? Perhaps your children, uh, perhaps your siblings or your parents or your friends or your coworkers, um, showing others that this is uh, a viable pathway, that you can do it, um, is a really powerful motivator for some people. And uh, the fourth one, to prove you can do it, uh, the question sometimes comes up of, uh, were you ever told that you weren't going to make it at university? Uh, did anyone ever put you know, uh, a barrier in the way? Did anyone ever put a block in the way and suggest that you weren't gonna make it? For some of our students, they claim their biggest motivator is to prove to other people that they can do it. And in the process, what happens is they prove to themselves that they can do it and they feel less worried about proving to others. But at the very beginning, proving to somebody else, sometimes it's a guidance counselor, somebody it's, it's a naysayer in their life who said they couldn't do it, they're here to prove them wrong but it might be something else. And so we want you to think about what those motivations are precisely because it's valuable to uh, be aware of what is going to keep you on track. You know, at the very beginning, there's excitement. Right now, there's probably anticipation and thinking ahead. Um, you know, as you move into courses, the full weight of the experience will come to you. You'll feel the, the reading load and what it's like to go to classes and, and do the the writing and the research associated. And at times you may have to ask yourself, well, why did I do this to myself? What am I going to get out of this experience? What's my motivation again? And uh, we'll be looking for you to, uh, to reacquaint yourself with that motivator. Uh, here's how those motivations line up. Uh, this is from last year's orientation. You can see here career is perhaps the biggest, self-fulfillment is next, and being a role model and proving to naysayers is, is a smaller set of uh, um, key motivators for people, but this gives you an idea of kind of how that lines up. Something else to think about, whether you're a transfer student or you're a mature student, um, really, you know, it's, it's not correct to think of students as having just one role. Um, generally speaking, our mature students and transfer students have a multitude of roles that uh, define their lives. And how you define your roles and prioritize those roles in your life uh, will play a role in how you progress academically and whether or not your experience is continuous uh, or interrupted. Here are some of those roles. Uh, being a parent, uh, being a partner or spouse, uh, having uh, you know, responsibilities for elder care. Maybe you're caring for a parent or more than one parent. Uh, perhaps you work for pay. Uh, you're maybe working uh, full time as you come to school. Maybe you're working part time. Uh, maybe that work is directly related to the thing you're studying. Perhaps it's not, and it's just a means to an end. Um, and then, of course, the role of student. And what we find is, first of all, student isn't necessarily at the top of the list. Um, for some, uh, th these priorities kind of move up and down in the priority. And depending on what's going on in life, uh, being a student might take a back seat temporarily. There might be points in your year when you're not 100% focused on your academics because you know, something's gone wrong with your children. Maybe one of them's uh, needing your attention for something. Um, maybe something's up uh, at your home. Maybe with elder care responsibilities or working responsibilities, your student role temporarily might get interrupted. And what I want you to think about is, it's not so much whether it gets interrupted or not, but how you respond to that interruption that will really dictate your progress at university. 
when I say juggling roles, I think what I mean here is that we're going to spend time in all of these roles. And student won't always be the top role. Um, we're going to sometimes have to put student uh, role first, but often these other roles will come first. And so this has an impact perhaps in how we think about our course loads, how we think about our um, commitments overall in life. And generally speaking, people coming to university as transfer students and as mature students, they come with a pretty full life already. And so then making space for the student role, the number of hours in class, the number of hours for self-directed study outside of class, what we would otherwise call homework, wedging that new role into a busy life and a full life already can be a challenge at first. And so you wanna give yourself a little room to find your balance and find what the right interplay between these roles is going to be. Okay, finally, a couple things here. Um, a few questions you can ask yourself through the summertime to help prepare you intellectually and emotionally perhaps for the experience uh, ahead. Uh, what do you think might be different about the quote unquote culture of university? How will you adapt? So if you're coming from a community college, let's say, and you're used to having 30 hours of class a week, how will university be different? One tip I might give you right away is you'll be in classes at a maximum of about 15 hours per week instead of 30. But those hours that you're not in class will convert to time you spend uh, on your own doing self-directed learning, readings, making notes, studying, and so on, doing assignments for those courses. What role will your prior education and lived experience play in the classroom? Well, we've got a little bit of a, uh, an ageist joke here. We've got a woman saying, you know, she corrects the history professor because she remembers being there. The, the sense here is it's important to engage that lived experience and your prior education when you come into a university classroom. Don't negate those experiences. But what you may feel is that those past experiences are quite different from what happens in the classroom. For instance, your lived experience, perhaps you've worked in a particular field and now you're taking courses related to that field. You might be listening to the theory in the class thinking that's not how it works in real life. That's a moment for really powerful learning to happen. Rather than saying, I'm gonna reject my lived experience or reject the new theory I'm hearing, wrestling with the conflict, the apparent conflict between lived experience and classroom theory, that's where the learning is gonna happen. So you wanna prepare yourself to be patient for that uh, interplay there. Same with prior education. What you learned before and how you learned before might need to shift uh, to adapt successfully to the university environment. And so you want to make sure that you're open to the possibility that how you do things will shift. You have to be adaptable. Finally, think about what challenges you think you'll encounter. What, in other words, what are your worries? And what can you do during the summer to connect to some of our resources to put those worries away so that you can resolve those worries and begin with a great deal of confidence as the year begins? Okay, last slide here, I think. Um, the adventure has already begun. We used to say the adventure begins, but in fact, if you're here already, you've already begun this journey. You've thought about coming to university, you've made application, you've organized yourself to apply, you've been successful at being admitted, and now you're attending our orientation. A few things to be thinking about over the course of the summer. Make sure you decide on a course load and course selections that are appropriate to you. You will have direct access to advising, and advisors will give you some guidance on this. Uh, but there's no rule that says you must take five courses. There's no rule that says you must take a certain array of courses. Uh, you want to think carefully about your course load. Think about that in light of whether you're seeking financial supports through OSAP, but also think about course uh, load in terms of what you think you can manage given all the roles in your life. And uh, remember that being a full-time student means the equivalent of three full courses over the course of a year. Course selections are just as important. Choose things that interest you. Choose things that are going to move you forward in your pathway. Um, and look for uh, how you assemble a course selection that permits you to cover off your uh, general education requirements. Secondly, having what I call, quote unquote, the conversation with your key supporters, your partners, spouses, family, friends, employers, about this experience. Do people know you're coming to university? Do people know? Uh, what your goals are for that. Do they understand what you need from them? Maybe at this stage, you're not sure yet exactly what you'll need from them. So the conversation is not a one-time thing. The conversation is an ongoing kind of dialogue you have with those key supporters to make sure they understand uh, what you're experiencing, to let them know where the challenges are, 
to let them know where the successes are so they can celebrate with you. Um, keeping an open dialogue, keeping an open line of communication with those key supporters is really a very important ingredient to your adventure as a student. Um, third thing here, knowing what signposts to watch for and how to respond to them. You might want to think ahead to say, what will be the signals that I give myself? What are the signposts to watch for that tell me things are going great? You know, good grades, I'm attending all my classes, I'm getting my readings done, I'm understanding those readings, I'm keeping up, I'm finding my resources, I'm making friends and connections in class. Those would be the kind of signposts that tell you things are going really well. If you happen into signposts, though, that tell you things are not going so well, maybe your grades are lower than you think or you're not keeping up with readings and so on, that's a time when we're going to encourage you to reach out for some support. Either that's to your advising area or to our office at the Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Students. We want you to know that we're here to support you. Sometimes, um, you know, you'll want to pay attention to drop dates and to grades and so on, just to make sure that you're handling things well and that you're adapting to the new circumstance. Finally, keep success in perspective. As I mentioned earlier, very often mature students and transfer students come with a, either an implicit or sometimes even explicit expectation of, of high performance. People expect them you know, to, to come to university and be scoring good grades right away. And I think what's important there is that success is relative and defined by each person. And you may want those high grades, but they may not be there immediately. You may have to do some adjustments uh, you may have to learn some new skills to get there. And what I would say is in the process of being successful academically in terms of grades in the classes you're in, make sure you find balance. Make sure you find a balance between school and the rest of life. And that's going to be a, a, a kinetic balance, not one that's fixed and stable all the time. It'll be where sometimes you spend a bit more time on school or a bit less time on school. Find that balance, though, and make sure that you're seeking a sense of connection so you're not feeling alone in the journey. A lot of the value of the university experience, whether you're coming from college or you're coming from another university or you're attending as a mature student, a lot of that excitement and the goodness of the experience comes from having that sense of connection. So I'm going to pause it there and pass it back to Navani and uh, we'll carry on from there. Hey Navani, over to you. And you are muted. <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Ryan. I'm just gonna start sharing my screen again. Okay. So the next part of our orientation deals with our peer mentors and they are also mature students like I've mentioned before. We have a few of our mentors who've been with us for a good amount of years. Um, we have Alan Feynman who's going into his fourth year psychology major. We're going to hear from Kate Moo King Curtis, who's also one of our peer mentors. She's, all, she's going into her fourth year of uh, childhood, youth, um, children, childhood, and youth program. And I have a video of our peer mentor, Catalin, that if we have enough time and it permits, I will sh uh, show you her video. But for now, what I'm going to conduct is just a Q&A with Alan and Kate with regards to their mature student experience and Alan was a transfer student as well So we'll hear from him on that perspective So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're going, going to go into gallery view so that we'll be able to see each other and, and hear their conversations um, So let's get started with that. So Alan and Kate what I would ask is if you can please we'll start with Alan first if you can uh, your, Say your name your program of study your year level um, and then we'll go into the questions. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Alan Feynman, and I'm uh, taking my honors BA in psychology. It's a four-year course, but I'm doing it in seven, and I have one more year to go. And Kate, you're you're on mute, Kate. <laughs> I still have to navigate this sometimes. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Kate Mukin Curtis. I'm uh, I'm going to my fourth year of our honors uh, BA program called Children, Childhood, and Youth Studies. And uh, that's it. Okay, so Alan and Kate, my first question is, what brought you to York University and why did you decide to return to school? Alan? Well, I decided to return to school um, basically to prove to myself that, that I could do it. Um, I was in Los Angeles uh, in the entertainment business and things were kind of uh, 
uh, running low in that field for me. So uh, I called up York University and just said, do you have any low tuition, rate, tuition rates for a very, very mature student? And they, they said, well, we waive the tuition when you reach 60. So I thought, this is a great opportunity. And I don't know, my instincts just said, well, you know what? Go for it. You, you went when you were a kid. You quit after two weeks. You were intimidated by the reading list and the lecture halls. And I sort of wanted to prove to myself that, that I could do it and sort of, you know, uh, towards the end of my life, go out with a bang. And um, that's uh, uh, basically why I decided to return. Thank you, Alan. And Kate? Uh, yes, so um, I uh, burnt out uh, as a traditional artist in uh, feature animation. I was in the business for a couple of decades. Uh, so I took on the roles of uh, development producer, coordinator, professional uh, development trainer for in-studio artists, uh, just to still be involved in, um, in the creative process. And it was just not a fit for me as I missed uh, art making. So. I decided to follow the path of uh, art therapy as my next passion, uh, which is a post-grad and I needed a bachelor's to apply to it. And, and I actually, I love my bachelor's. It's very relevant to, it, it will add to my art therapy practice. Thank you, Kate. And Alan, back to you, we'll go to the next question. What was your experience as a mature student at York? Um, you were a transfer student and a mature student. So if you could speak to that, please. Well, uh, after I quit, when I went to York in 1971, I quit after two weeks. And then about a year later, I went to Centennial College and I, I, I took a, a three-year course in communications, uh, creative advertising. Um, and then fast forward uh, 40 years later, uh, I got transfer credits from the Centennial College years. Uh, I just got 15 transfer credits, but that, that was fine. Um, and my experiences as a mature student, um, well, it's interesting. I, I was thinking people were going to give me a, a double take, you know, you know, oh, look at this old guy. He's not even a professor. Well, who is he? Where is he? Why is he here? But actually people seem to accept me more than I accept me. So, um, I just, uh, it, 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 it felt pretty good. And, um, as a mature student, what I did was, I, I just like, maybe because of my age, I just, I was not afraid to ask questions in class. And I engaged the professors and I took advantage of their office hours, which I find that younger students didn't do. So I kind of had sometimes the professors to myself. Um, and basically those are the high points of me as a m mature student. I like to hang out at coffee shops and just talk to people and get to know them. Thank you, Alan. And Kate, what was your experience as a mature student? So um, it, it's a, it has been very fulfilling. Um, I, I find that I enjoy uh, school a lot more than I did when I was uh, young and I thought I loved it uh, back then, but it really uh, adds uh, to learning, having lived life uh, a little bit. Um, it's so relevant to um, the learning experience. Uh, but at the same time, it's been a bit isolating because uh, of the generational gap with uh, most of my classmates. Um, um, I would say the majority of my classmates uh, want to go to teacher's uh, um, college and uh, they're really young. Uh, they talk about the parents making dinner. And meanwhile, I'm thinking, what am I going to, you know, make for dinner for my kids tonight? So it's, uh, I mean, we get along. But uh, yes, I'm uh, the oldest student that's a mom and a wife and had things happening before then. Yeah, juggling those roles. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. Uh, okay, so what would you say, I'll go back to Alan. Alan, what would you say are some positive aspects of being a mature learner? Um, I, I, I suppose uh, uh, being a mature learner, um, one of the positive aspects is I could corroborate certain things. Um, for example, when I was studying the Bible in a, in a secular context, they were talking about uh, Moses parting the Red Sea. And I, I, I concurred with that. I said, well, I, I, he was a nice man. I was there and he did part the Red Sea. And, um, you know, I, I could confirm it. People, uh, and also, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln, he did grow up in a log cabin. And, and I was in the log cabin right next to him. So anyways, <laughs> th things like that were, were uh, beneficial. 
uh, being a mature student. I'm sorry, I forgot the question. What was the question again? <laughs> what are some positive aspects of being a mature student? Well, positive aspects, one of the negative things is my memory is going. Uh, my short-term memory is going. Um, my short-term memory is going. Uh, so um, anyways, uh, no, the positive aspects are uh, just, uh, I suppose not being, a, not being inhibited, I think that comes with age, you know, and and you just feel free to, like I said before, engage with the professors, and take advantage of their time, and that that that's basically it. Thanks, Alan and Kate. What would you say are some positive aspects of being a mature learner? So I would say, like learning as a mature um, uh, learner has been richer and uh, more focused of an experience than in my early twenties, like I mentioned before, uh, when I took uh, art in college. Um, I would say like your priorities are different. Uh, you, uh, you know yourself uh, better. Um, I will echo on some of uh, Alan's uh, um, comments on corroborating things. Maybe not as far as Moses, maybe a little bit more modern times, but uh, say for example, like I'm taking um, one of my electives is uh, intro to gender woman studies. And I remember that second wave of uh, feminism, like I was a kid. And uh, my mom was a single parent and, you know, it's just like the collision of, you know, the old school and the new school. I remember these things. So when I go through the readings or when we make discussions, sometimes I can refer to my personal experiences. So, and, and then, you know, with that children, childhood and youth studies, not that you are an expert at children and youth as a parent, but they just some things when they talk about it, it's like, yes, you know, I, I can relate to that, you know, from um, practical knowledge. So anyway, those are, that's my Thank answer. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Um, so Alan, back to you. As a mature student learner, time management plays an important role while at post-secondary. How do you deal with juggling various roles and manage your time? Well, uh, regarding managing my time, I, for me, it's very simple. Um, I don't look at it as a whole. I look at it bit by bit, a day by day. Um, say I have 100 pages to read in 10 days. Well, I don't just look at it as, I don't, I don't want to do the 100 pages of the day before. So what I do is I, I read maybe 10 pages a day, and then I get it done. It's, it, it, it's like anything in life. You just, you, you, you parse, uh, what's the word? Uh, partition? Partition, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. Gee, I've been here four years and I have to think of that one. So you, you partition things, you know, you, you balance it and you just don't leave things all to the, to, to, to the last minute. And in fact, right now I'm studying uh, for my fall term. I'm, 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 I'm doing some pre-reading so I can be prepared. And, and I like to, um, time management wise, before the lecture starts, you know, I like to be as prepared as I can for the lecture so I read. I read as much as I can for that particular lecture rather than going to the lecture first and then reading so that I can understand everything and then ask questions. And uh, so that's regarding time management. Was there a second part to that question? Or uh, no, you, you answered it. Um, Kate, what about you? Do you want me to repeat the question? No, no, no. Um, so in terms of time management and juggling uh, various roles, uh, for me, it's a uh, moving target. Um, you know, I can plan as much as I can, but I have to keep adapting to sometimes like within a day. So I have two teens and one tween, as well as our health challenges. And I'm still trying to stay adaptable. Uh, I think that's key um, when you have a, a complex uh, life and keep prioritizing and being open to rejuggle those priorities uh, sometimes on a daily basis. So from morning to afternoon, sometimes it changes. And uh, I talk to other mature students I know on how they juggle um, with many aspects of their lives. So that helps me too. Okay, thank you, Kate. And um, as a mature student, Alan, were you able to get involved on campus, join clubs, volunteer experience? Well, I, I have volunteered for ACMAPS. And uh, what I would like to do in the coming year is just, you know, if people are uh, would like to talk about specific uh, things that I can relate to. I would love to uh, talk to them about it. Um, and um, 
uh, basically the clubs, uh, I, I mean, I joined the Tate McKenzie uh, gym and I, but I didn't take advantage of it as much as I should have. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, so the clubs and activities, what was the other part of the, the question? Just volunteer opportunities or clubs. So you were, you were a peer mentor with ACMAP. So that answers the Yeah, question. yeah. That but regarding clubs, I would never really join a club that would have me for a member. So that's an old Groucho line. Um, but I, I actually, you know what? Uh, I mean, uh, obviously I've been in comedy most of my life. And I, I would say that in school, the most important thing is maintaining your sense of humor, especially about yourself, especially the, not to take yourself too seriously. Um, I mean, my philosophy is that life is too short and so am I. Um, but, uh, you know, I, basically that's it. You know, just maintain a sense of humor. Okay, thank you, Alan. And Kate, what about you? Were you able to join any clubs and volunteer opportunities? Yes, so um, other than uh, um, volunteering for ACMAPS uh, um, as a peer mentor for the last couple of years, I was also a lounge a volunteer for YAMSO, which uh, stands for York University Metro Student Organization uh, since my first year. Um, and I connected with other mature students uh, through it. Um, I would say that no matter how busy my life was, I dedicated one hour of my weekly time to go to the Yamso Lounge, you know, whether there was nobody there and I had like quiet time and a clean space or, you know, just like connecting to other mature students that totally understand the complexities of uh, my life because they have it too. And they're all very interesting people. Like all of you, I'm sure have many stories uh, to tell and many experiences. So that, that, that was very valuable to me too. Okay, thank you, Kate. And thanks to both of you for being ACMAS peer mentors. You're awesome mentors with us. Um, the next question I have is, did your mature student experience teach you something that you did not know beforehand, Alan? Uh, yes, actually it did. Um, when I was younger, well, like I said, I went to York after two weeks and I quit. So. I had a tendency to quit things. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, stick to it a lot. No, I'm not, not everything, but I, you know, um, in fact, even relationships, I didn't really stick to. I, the longest one I had was six, seven hours, but I won't go into that. So, um, you know, it's just sticking with it. And, and I realized that, um, you know, as a mature student, I guess I've become more mature. And I don't give up. I, I, I took statistics. Statistics is a hard course. And I remember getting to a point uh, where I just, I couldn't get this one formula or whatever it was. And I, I felt I hit a brick wall, but I just kept at it. I kept at it. I, I, I would not stop. And finally I broke through and I got it. So, 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 so don't give up. And also regarding the amount of uh, uh, courses you take, I take two to three courses a year. And Brian, you know, as he said, you could take three courses a year if you're um, three courses a year, and, and that would mean that you were uh, full time. Uh, if you do apply as a student with a disability, which is a whole other thing, you can take two courses per year. Um, but, anyways, uh, quality, not quantity. And that's why I'm doing my four years in, in seven. I would have liked to have done it in six, but it's, it's seven. And, and and that's it. Thanks, Alan. And Kate, what uh, did your mature student um, experience teach you something that you did not know beforehand? Yeah, so um, I did not realize that I was going to thrive um, as much as I have in a university setting um, because I come from the arts, I come from image, I come from film, and then jump into no pictures, only words, lots of reading, lots of writing. Um, I, I surprised myself. And, and I also drew from, a, you know, like people close to me in my life that were fast readers, were good writers. Um, and uh, it's been a bit of like a, a teamwork uh, thing. Like uh, I thought that I was going to be, okay, this is my thing. You know, I'm on my own. But um, it became like a community um, thing for me. It, it was very rejuvenating and, and purposeful. 
Okay, thank you guys. Um, I do have a couple more questions, but I know I'm keeping my eye on the time. It's 1202. Um, so very quickly for the last two that I have is basically we're in the middle of a pandemic. This is a very important question, so I want to get this out to, to everyone. As you know, we're currently in the midst of a pandemic and York has moved classes online. Um, so for Alan and Kate, um, when we moved online in March, um, how are you dealing with online classes? Is it doable? How were your professors helpful with you? Alan, you go yes. first. Yes, my, my professor was, well, well, he was helpful. He, he had a Zoom session, sort of, I mean, a practice session. Um, and uh, it, it, it is helpful. And even this right now uh, with these sessions here with Zoom, it's very helpful to me. And thank you, Navani, for, for helping me with all these little uh, things that I was trying to get used to. So, I mean, I grew up with a stone and chisel, so I'm just getting into the computers right now. But um, yes, it, it is very doable. The online is, is, is very doable. But if you're a social person like I am, it might be a little, I just, well, I like the in-person thing, but it's very doable. And, um, and it's still, you can be sociable here too, you know. And, okay, uh, thanks, Alan and Kate. Um, so, um, I find like online learning feels like twice as much work as the on-campus uh, equivalent. And I noticed that because uh, when we uh, quickly ramped up from on-campus old school um, in March to online, um, it, it just felt like the, this conversational um, synergy, it, it's a lot more than just translating into writing. So you have to be more disciplined with it. You have to probably take few fewer courses just to get a feel for it and um, that would be my personal recommendation and since the global pandemic uh, forced great changes like uh, I find that faculty has uh, been proactively uh, learning along with students on how to more effectively translate their teaching styles to an online platform so they will be in better shape uh, for the fall um, they, they're doing as much learning as we are and that's been a bit of an equalizer it's been interesting to see that and the ones that I have uh, experienced have been constantly improving on their deliveries and, and on student success so um, I'm, I like to be um, hopeful and positive and uh, I think this whole crisis has uh, been a platform for like innovation and being creative. Definitely, Kate. Thank you, Alan and Kate, for being on my panelists today. I greatly appreciate it. I'm just going to start sharing my screen quickly to do just a quick wrap up with you guys and uh, speak on YumCell. Um, I won't show you Catalin's video right now, but we will be sending, as Brian said, uh, this the PowerPoint presentation to you guys and you'll be able to see that. Um, also, if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat. We'll address it at the end. Um, yeah, so, so I'm going to invite, I'm going to go back, stop sharing in a few minutes, but I just wanted to bring this, New York University Mature Student Organization is a club on campus and Elaine is one of the executive members for fall winter 2020, 2021. Um, this is their email, their Facebook. Once we send you the slideshow, you'll be able to get that information. So I'll stop sharing again and I'll ask Elaine if um, she can speak to Yemso. Yeah, so. Elaine, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Lovely. Um, no problem. Hello, mature students, and welcome to York University. York University Mature Student Organization, YOMSO for short, is an all-volunteer student club founded in 2004. It is the only student-run club for mature students at the university. We have about 400 members, including students who are parents of young children. Our main goal is to help and serve York's community of mature students. YUMSO provides an opportunity for mature students, that's us who have life experiences beyond the lecture hall, to mingle with students in similar situations. Working closely with ACMAPS, we aim to connect you with mentors who can support and guide you, whatever the challenges, concerns, and obstacles you may face in your experience as a mature university student. Under normal circumstances, our home on campus is at Vanier College, room 113B on the ground floor. This comfortable room provides a place for mature students to network as well as to relax, have lunch, or simply to socialize with other mature students. The lounge provides complimentary tea, coffee, and snacks, two desktop computers, a fridge, and a microwave. However, because of the pandemic, 
and the need for social distancing, the lounge will unfortunately not be open this fall. We will keep you posted as to when it will become available again. In the past, we have organized pub nights, coffee meetups, as well as larger events like an open house in September and a holiday party in December, which is an event for the entire family, students, their partners, and their children. <clears throat> However, this academic year, at least during the fall semester, our activities will be different because of the university's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our presence during the fall semester will be not on campus, but online. Through social media, we will try to keep you connected with one another and with campus life. We will be communicating up-to-date information and informing you of events that may be of interest to you from across the campus. We also plan to hold a monthly virtual social, social get-together. <clears throat> UMSO volunteers are the key to our success. It is thanks to the generous donation of your time that we've been able to keep the lounge open for the enjoyment of all UMSO members. The role that volunteers play in our organization is huge. Since our executive team so far this year is small, we are looking for other mature students to join us. So if you are interested in being a part of UMSO's executive, check out our social media, Twitter, Instagram, and especially Facebook, where we will be posting information on which positions are open and how to join. If you have any expertise or information you would like to share with your fellow mature students, or if you have any questions or suggestions as to what we could do to better support you, please drop us a line at yumsoyu at gmail.com or Facebook YU, YUMSO, uh, or Twitter at YUMSO or Instagram at YUMSO underscore YU. Um, I understand that Navani is posting our contact information online so you can copy it down from there. Thank you and solidarity, the YUMSO team. Thank you, Elaine. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys one more time. We're just wrapping up now. So that's YUMSO's information, their email, which you will get when we send you the PowerPoint. I just wanna to bring to your attention right before we just do our quick thank you. Um, York University, as Brian has stated when he did um, his opening remarks, um, they, we do have a COVID-19 update website that students can go to and any information that comes from the university will be posted there. So please keep keeping look out for this information. When you go to the main York University websites, it's usually in the corner, um, I think in the top right corner, but you'll be able to find it. And then you can find any information that you need about COVID-19 and updates and if we're returning and when we're returning, things like that, you would go to this website. Um, so that's the end of our orientation today. Again, we just wanna say thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to our panelists, to our YUMSO member, Brian, for being our keynote speaker. Um, if you have any, um, if you'd like to ask us questions, I know there was a lot going on in the chat. Thank you to Dilraj for managing that, our work study student, that was amazing. And for the other students who contributed and, and assisted as well. Um, but if you do have questions that we were not able to address, please reach out to us at acmaps.yorku.ca Send me, I'm the one that manages that email. If you call us at 416-736-5770, uh, um, I will be the one that answers that phone call and any which way that I can help you or refer you to another area on campus, another department, um, we will be able to do that for you. Um, there was a lot of advising questions I realized um, and transfer credit questions. So I just wanna address that piece of it. Um, if you had already seen your advisor and you got transfer credits after, you saw your advisor. My advice is that you go back to the advisor, make another appointment and see the advisor so that they can see what transfer credits you've got. Um, and any questions about your, your credits, your courses, um, dropping, you can always go speak to the academic advisor, but that you'd have to go within the faculty that you're registered in. And I believe Del Raj posted the advising link um, to all the advising offices and you'd be able to sort that through. They are doing Zoom sessions um, and they're doing emails and phone calls as well. So you will get a response. Um, Brian, I don't know, I'll stop sharing. I'll go back to gallery. If you have anything else to say, you can jump back in. Thanks, Navani. Um, just, uh, just a quick note to everybody who's still online with us. Um, 
you've uh, you put into the chat a large number of excellent questions. Uh, we've been able to respond to some of those within the chat, uh, but as Navani was saying, uh, we want you to feel free to reach out to us. Uh, one of the things we are doing today is cataloging these questions uh, to make kind of a, a question and answer list for you. And uh, following our session today, we'll be sending out not only the slides, uh, but some of the information uh, and contact information you might need to, to answer some of these questions. Um, understandably, at this stage, especially for those of you who are transfer students, there's a lot of uh, specific questions about uh, how your transfer credit was assessed and how those credits that are given to you apply to the courses that you have and should you keep the courses you've enrolled in or should you drop and so on. Those are excellent questions, uh, but I need to say that it's very hard to give a very generic answer to those because transfer credit is a very individualized assessment. And so we wanna make sure that rather than giving you uh, a broad answer that ends up being incorrect, we wanna make sure we put you in touch with the people who can help you to get to the bottom of those questions. Also, lots of useful questions about, can I read ahead? How do I access my course materials? When do classes begin and so on? Uh, we'll make sure that we have included those uh, questions and answers in the materials that we share with you so you have all that stuff there. Um, one of the things that we should say is that uh, ordinarily when we do our orientations, uh, we do a three hour session. And so we didn't think you wanted to sit for three hours looking at Zoom. Um, that, that could be quite exhausting. And so what we've done is we've broken up the content into smaller pieces and we've started the process much earlier in the year. So today being June 30th, this is probably the earliest we've done an orientation. And we're delighted that you have this engagement level with this many questions and we're happy to work with you over the coming weeks to make sure you get the information you need. Um, again, when we, when we start this, today was the introductory piece. There are two additional dates um, those are not repeats of today's session. They are extensions of today's session, and we strongly encourage you to enroll in those and attend those with us again. Um, again, I'll say we'll be sending out some materials to those who've registered for today, uh, including answers to a number of the questions that you've got. If ever you're not sure, uh, or you have persistent questions that need resolution, or you're just not able to contact somebody who we've pointed you in the direction of, please reach us at acmaps at yorku.ca. I'll put that in the group chat, but I'll put that up again just so you have it. That's our generic email, um, and you can use that to uh, send us broad questions and to, to seek information and referrals. So uh, we'll be happy to respond to that. Um, please note, with, uh, with nearly 100 participants today, we'll, we'll maybe take a day or so to respond to you. So if something's super, super urgent, um, let us know. Put put urgent in the uh, in the header line, uh, and that'll help us to sort them. But generally, it'll take us a day or so to get around to responding to those. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Except thank you so much. Um, also, thank you to Kate um, and uh, and Alan for uh, being our panelists today and talking with our students um, and uh, all of you who've participated today. Uh, be assured that uh, we're here to support you and uh, you've made an excellent choice choosing York and uh, we're looking forward to uh, building a relationship over the course of the summer and into the uh, fall term so that you feel settled and you have all the resources you need at your disposal. Navani, back to you for a final word and then we'll wrap up. Okay, then my final words are just thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out today. Um, hope to see you at our part two session of this on July 21st and even part three on August 24th. Um, thank you again.